Hello and welcome to Brand New Vegan. This is Chuck and I'm doing something a little different today. This is a presentation I gave the other night and I thought I'd share it with you all. Hope you enjoy. So for those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. I am a plant-based blogger. I have recipes, I have some articles. Um, I teach people how to cook basically. And I've been doing this since 2013. That is me standing next to the Dr. McDougall himself. Um, again, I've been vegan since 2008, blogging since 2013, 250 recipes on my blog. There's the link down there if you want to check it out. And I follow all of the plant-based docs. So I gave the question to my viewers at the, uh, at the center where I gave the talk and I said, have we really forgotten how to eat? That might sound like a strange question. Where did that come from? Well, it came from a quote. And that quote was this guy, Dr. Esselstyn. And he said, 95% of America has no idea how to eat. And I believe it's a true statement. I really do. I mean, just look around. We are so sick here in America and it has to do with the way we eat. I mean, look at these stats. They're pretty sobering. Uh, keep that second one in mind, almost 40%, 20 plus are obese in 2017. So that was two years ago. There's another slide coming up that kind of talks about that. So when you are obese, of course, you have the risk of heart disease, hypertension, arthritis, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, all kinds of stuff. So this is not where we want to be as a country, not at all. And I think it comes from the, our diet, standard American diet. It's just my opinion, but if you look at that, 88% of all of our calories come from either processed food or animal-based foods. That 12% from plants, yeah, a lot of that's french fries, if you want to consider that a vegetable. This is how we eat. Even the vegan stuff up in the upper right-hand corner, it's still processed food. Look at that fact there, though. 42% of Americans are projected to be obese by the year 2030. We're already at 40%, and that was two years ago. I think we'll make it. Like Dr. McDougall says, it's the food. It's the food. It's the food. No doubt about it. We have got to change how we eat. And yeah, I think we forgot how to eat. Next slide. Yes, we seem to have forgotten what real food is. So I would like to talk to you about the stuff I've learned over the last 10 years of following a whole food plant-based diet. This is not how to be a vegan guide, but it's just common sense steps that anybody can use. I am not a medical professional. This is for information only. Please don't take any of this as medical advice. Go see your doctor, blah, blah, blah. Have to say that. And here we go. Fast food. If you do nothing else, if you're the average American, just cutting out fast food is going to be good. It's going to be, it'll make you feel a whole lot better. There's no nutritional value in it. It's all salt, fat, and sugar. It's very calorie dense. Yeah, we've seen these the typical street in America, right? McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut. Don't eat this stuff, guys. If nothing else, just stay away from this stuff and you're on your way to getting healthier. Avoid processed meats. Yes, bacon. Sorry. The World Health Organization, if you watch the movie, What the Health, it's on Netflix, very good. They have labeled all processed meats as a group one carcinogen. It will cause cancer, no doubt about it. One serving of processed meat per day increases your risk of type two diabetes by 51%. And when you look at that sausage in a picture, what do you see? What part of the pig is that sausage? You don't wanna know. It's all ground up. You have no idea what's in it. If you're going to avoid the processed meat, you might as well avoid the processed anything like those grocery store foods in the center aisles, the microwave heat and eat foods, the TV dinners. You don't know what's in them other than salt, fat, and sugar. It's processed. This picture came from a book, Hungry Planet, What the World Eats. Typical American diet. Oh, there's some fruit and vegetables there in the center, just a little tiny bit. Otherwise, it's all processed crap food. This is why we're so sick, guys. Michael Pollan said, if it came from a plant, go ahead and eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. It's good advice. Really, really good advice. Moving on to step four. Never trust the front of a label. 
I know they say heart healthy and sugar free and vegan and cage free. They'll say anything if it makes a sale. They're in corporations. That's what they do. They make money. So real foods have no labels. Look at that. Pop tarts. Ooh, good source of calcium. You're going to eat them? I hope not. They'll say anything. Look at that Pam, fat free. Why? Zero calories from fat because a serving size is a third of a second. If you can spray one that short a time, like Jeff Novick says, never ever believe anything on the front of a package or product ever. Again, if you do just this one thing, you're on your way to getting healthier. Avoid dairy. We don't need dairy for calcium, which is what we've been taught. Calcium's a mineral guys. It comes from the ground. Cows eat the grass. Grass takes the calcium up out of the ground. Cows eat it, we eat the cow. You don't need it. We don't need to eat grass, but we can eat greens. Cow's milk protein may be the single most significant chemical carcinogen to which humans are exposed. T. Colin Campbell said that. It dairies for baby cows. Michael Clapper said milk is nothing more than baby cow growth food. Its purpose, take a 65 pound calf, turn it into a 700 pound cow as rapidly as possible. So what do you think will happen if we drink that? Yeah, well, just look around. It's, it's working. Number six, avoid restaurants. It's kind of hard to do. We love restaurants, social, being with our friends, but they're not there for our health. You know that. The food's ridiculously high in salt, fat, and sugar. Oversized portions and prices. Um, look at this Panera Bread. 1,400 milligrams of sodium on that one sandwich, and that's a vegan sandwich. Again, they're not there for our health. They're there for their profit. If you can help it, avoid them. I know it's hard, but there are some there are some restaurants you could use. Avoid using oil. This is a very hot topic. It's a process, guys. It's 120 calories a tablespoon. It's the most calorie dense food on the planet. 4,000 calories a pound. There's no vitamins in it, no minerals, no fiber, no nothing. Look at that picture on the left. That's what 500 calories of oil looks like. We should be eating the one on the right. 500 calories of fruit and veggies can fill our stomach. Combine them with a salad and olive oil and you got a thousand calories in just one salad. It's kind of silly. No oil, says Dr. Esselstyn. And he means it. He's very adamant about that. So is Dr. Medjugorje. We get all the healthy fat we need from the fruits and vegetables. Like Dr. Medjugorje says, the fat you eat, the fat you wear. And it goes right to your middle, or your thighs, your butt. Don't need it. You can cook without oil. I do it all the time. Avoid seafood. I don't think I have to say why. I mean, it's so polluted in the pollute, in the oceans right now, in the rivers. There's so much mercury, at least mercury, if not tons of other pollutants in there. The factory farm salmon and the tilapia. It's so ugly, so nasty. We think we need it for the DHA and the EPA, the omega-3s. Fish don't make it. They get it from the plants, too. We can just eat the walnuts and the flax seeds and chia seeds and kidney beans and the black beans. We can eat the plants just like the cows with the calcium. We can get it directly from the source. Stop eating eggs. Eggs are scary. I mean, factory farm chickens and eggs are just so scary. And remember, the uh, male chicks from the factory farms are all ground up. We don't need those. This came from the PCRM website, which is Dr. Barnard. You can read the stats. Increases your risk of heart disease, colon cancer, diabetes. It's pure cholesterol. And if you didn't know this, the USDA even says that eggs cannot legally be labeled nutritious or good for you or healthful or healthy or safe. What's that say? Yeah, avoid the eggs. In fact, just avoid all the animal meats, period. Even chicken. And, and people have to ask, though, what, you're vegan? You don't eat meat? Will you still eat chicken? No, chicken is meat, guys. It really is. And with any kind of meat, there's no fiber, which we're already deficient in. It's just so many studies now are pointing to animal protein as being the source of all of our problems. So avoid it if you can. I know this is hard, but I do it. Lots of other people do it. We don't need the animal protein, just like the giraffes and the elephants and the cows, buffalo, uh, gorillas, some of the largest animals on the planet, and they don't eat meat to get their protein. There's no such thing as protein deficiency. 
Dr. Barnard beefed your idea of real food for real people. You better live close to a really good hospital. That's true. You don't need it, avoid it. It's okay, what can I eat then? You just told me everything I can eat, which is everything I used to eat. So now what? Well, you can eat what I eat. And I eat pretty good, believe me. Oh, and there's this guy here. He, he told you, us, what to eat like 2,000 years ago or more. Eat the seeds, eat the fruit, eat the vegetables. That shall be your meat. Yeah, eat that stuff right there. Fruit, grain, legumes, beans, vegetables. That's what I eat. That's what a lot of people on my channel and in my uh, blog, my Facebook groups, that's what we all eat. We're healthy. If you haven't watched uh, Game Changers, that might change your mind. But that sounds boring. I can never eat like you guys do. You eat leaves and rocks and twigs and you vegans. Really? Is that what you think? Let me show you exactly what I eat. Yeah, mashed potatoes, tomato soup. That's my blood pressure, by the way. Yes, that's a grilled cheese, but that's plant-based cheese. That's my own potato carrot cheese mixture. Really, really good. Do I look deprived? Pinto beans, homemade corn tortillas, some succotash down there, some cornbread. I eat good and it tastes amazing. Got a bottle of Cholula up there for my uh, bean burritos. So good. Look at those nachos. That's my cheese sauce. That's not real cheese. That's potato carrot cheese, jalapenos, some black olives, the meat kind of stuff. That's actually cauliflower, walnuts, mushrooms. That's my chili, upper left corner, and that's the trophy at one, 2017. Came in second place in a chili cook-off in Texas, believe it or not. True story. Again, my cheese sauce. Again, does this look boring to you? I, I, I don't see where it's boring. Tamales, pasta, tacos. People say, I could never eat like that. Why not? It's exactly what you guys eat, and it tastes great. It's anything but boring, full of vitamins, full of fiber, full of minerals. Plants are easy to grow. They taste great. And that's the food that we were, as humans, as herbivores, that we are designed to eat. This is a buddy of mine, Stephen. This is what he did following a plant-based diet. He's no longer type 2 diabetic. Lost a lot of weight. Saved his life. He's now uh, a speaker. So how do I get started? Well, it's easy. For one, you can start doing those 10 steps I showed you. Just pick a couple and start. Get rid of the fast food. Eat real food. Not too much, mostly plants, like Michael Pollan says. Do the best you can, but it's not that hard to start. Just get, start pushing out that other bad food and start filling your plate with real food, like potatoes, rice, corn, beans, comfort foods. You guys like this stuff anyway, right? We all do. Keep it simple. Just eat real food the way nature designed it. There's the summary. Get rid of the eggs, the seafood, the oil. Restaurants are bad. I know they're tempting, but they're bad. Never trust labels. Get rid of all the processed stuff. Eat what they do in the blue zones. Lots of fruit, vegetables, beans. Yeah, those things right there. Another good tip for getting started is to have a why. Like, why do you want to do this other than to get healthy? I want to do it to get healthy for my family. That's my why. I got a little seven-year-old grandson. There he is. And he's my, uh, he's my pride and joy. That's my why. When you have a good, strong why like that, it makes this a whole lot easier. There you go. That's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. I will be back with a recipe video here soon. Um, add some changes in the house. It's getting really hard to kind of do those recipe videos like I used to, but I'm working on it. I want to get back into the swing of things. If you haven't though, subscribe so you don't miss that and ring that bell so you get notified when they do come out. And until then, I will see you soon. This is Chuck from Brand New Vegan. Thanks for watching.